Hey, what's up, Miss Rashad? Here with Antonio, OG friend of the fam, of course. Cal raising and kids. We are back with the Mandalorian season three, episode five, the pirate. Of course, all spoilers got to talk about the thing to talk about the thing. I feel like we can just go B for B for this episode. Starts off with, you know, we're back on Navarro, you know, with um, Grief Cargo. They haven't even replaced or put a, a, a fake um <laughs> <laughs> a, a fake uh oh god what's the android that, that, ig11 uh, ig11 you see she's still missing the the top part of the head of ig11 looking at like a hollow map of a guess of the of the um city and everything and he's talking to his little advisors and engine they were the engineers by the way and he was just like I think, you know, saying we should move, you know, I'm saying this district closer to the trade district, blah, 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 this and that. Next thing you know, you hear everybody outside like screaming and hollering and, you know, he looks up and he sees, you know, what I'm saying a Corsair vessel, you know, and, and he's like, oh, and then next thing you know, his. His fake C three PO droid, fake C three PO looking droid. <laughs> Listen, that droid is C three PO with a dago different face. We, we we know that's exactly. I mean, what we it know it's a protocol droid. Droid comes in and is like, "Hey, you being held?" Turns on the system and he sees exactly who it is. It's good old as I called him the first what first second episode swamp thing, but really uh-huh. his name is. Gorian Shard. He's like I guess the pirate king of that area. Gorian Shard is back for retribution. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? For what happened. And he's like, look here. I'm going to tell you straight up. It's about to be on. Uh, Don't hail me again unless you surrender it. And starts bombarding the city. You know, just straight yeah. up bombarding the city. And it was crazy, man. It, it, you know, I was just like, yo, no type of, you know what I'm saying, no type of warning, no type of, hey, you got your people got a few minutes to get out. No, nah, they about to get all this smoke. Basically destroys the city. Grief is like, Telling his um protocol droids and other people, hey yo, let's get the people up out of here. The protocol droid was like, Grand Magister, we got your ship ready to leave. This ain't in grief, <laughs> uh, you know. The leaves, just, hey yo, screw them people. We got these people to go, you know. And this shows the the growth and the development of grief cargo. He's like, hey man, I'm not leaving my people, yo. Like we we not doing that. Like let's let's go. And and so, it also shows just how punk all protocol droids are. <laughs> Yes, protocol droids are all trash. Grief light is like, hold on real quick. So he sees an astromech droid and he basically gives it a, you know, makes a message and gives it to him. It was like, yo, go get this person. The first, you know, person I thought of, like, yo, I said, maybe he knows where Mando is and they're going to go straight to Mando. And no, doesn't go to Mando, you know. So what happens is you cut to another scene on another planet or whatever and... We see good old yeah Carson <laughs> Tiva, and then he has been kind of like a integral background character in this whole Mandalorian yeah, and Book of Bo- Boba Fett series. You know, if you don't know who he is, he was the Asian gentleman who um flew to start on um, the X Wing fighter who pardoned um Mando a, a couple of seasons back. You know, saying a season back and everything like that. And he's kind of been like an ally. He the one that told Cara Dune, "Hey, you know, you should become." A part of our little ranger. Yeah, yeah know, there's a place for, for you. you know what there's saying? a place for you, right? Stuff like that. So he's like in a little cantina type thing with a bunch of other like um New Republic starfighters and stuff like that. And and then um so the bartender is like, hey, got a message for you. And he's like, basically, can I use your version of the phone? <laughs> you know the second. Yo, you know what's crazy too? I think it's the first time it's ever happened. What? It had diegetic music. Yes. So I was sitting, I said, like, oh, this is a real funny, what kind of funky song going on here? Right. And then they go into the bar and that's the music in the bar. In case you didn't know, diegetic music is when they play a song in a movie mm-hmm. or a show and uh, the song is actually in the yeah. show itself. Right. And on the real, that jank was kind of a bop too as well because I was just <laughs> like, okay, like a little bit when, it, when the music was playing. Yeah. And so he looks at the message, it's Grief Cargo saying, hey, yo, man, we are under attack. Look, I know we're not part of the New Republic, you know, but my man, can you help us out in some way possible? Look out for your boy. Look, yo. out, <laughs> look out for your guy. You know what I'm saying? And then, so he listens back. And then next thing you know, we see somebody, and I completely, like, at 4 o'clock in the morning, like, screamed in my house when I saw this dude. Zeb from Rebels has made it to live action. 
And I was mm-hmm. looking like, I was looking like, wait a minute. And I said, hold, I said, oh my God, is that who I, no, it ain't who it is. Because if you remember the end of Rebels, you know, they, they, he did happen to find the rest of his people because it was like, they was like in a little pocket corner of the universe. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was like 12 of them left. You know what yeah, I'm it, it, yeah, it was, um, you know. What, what's your one in Fulcrum's name? Um, yeah, uh-huh. What was his name? The the, the, um, the white yeah, general. My guy. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of his name, but he was part of the um he was part of the um the empire, and he was the one that basically had genocided, the, you know what I'm saying? Took out Critic. The, he, Critic, right. Critic thought he um took out all of those people and he didn't. You know what I'm saying? He found out that he didn't, they were still alive. But you see Zeb, live action Zeb, and I want to be honest, he looked great, you know. Say it was you know, you, you know it was straight up CG. But yo, he was it wasn't Krennic. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, hold no, on. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah. I got it. Okay, he was a great looking version of him made into live action. And as soon as I saw that, the first thing I thought of was like, yo, this has got to be a um setup or precursor. Go ahead, Rashad. You like better. Callus. Callus, that's right. Callus, Krennic. Callus, yeah, yeah. yeah. Krennic is Krennic is, is 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 your boy who got from Rogue One. Yeah, he yeah. got choked on his own ambitions. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We will talk about that another time. Anyway, uh, so Zeb, I was like, yo, are we set? I said, yo, I think we setting up for Ahsoka, and we're gonna gotta see whole, be, and you're gonna see the whole be. Rebels team together, and this kind of even set up before Ahsoka was gonna even be, uh. A movie because think of, I mean, a show, but think about this back in Rogue One when they were when they made the plan that hey, we're gonna go, um, go to Scarif and everything. You hear the announcer say General Sandula, uh-huh. you say General Sandula, and we know that that's Sandula from Rebels. And someone said you also see you see Chopper, Chopper in, the, um, in the background, Chopper's yeah. in the background. So, mm-hmm. so far, so what we know in the live action Star Wars world right now is from Rebels. Yes, Ahsoka is there. Yes, General Sandula Sin- G- is there. Yes, Chopper is there. And of course, we know that Thrawn is there as well. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see all of them back together. We're going to probably see Ezra. And then mm-hmm. we're going to see Sandula's son. Um, you know Jason? what I'm saying? Yeah, um, son that she had with... Um, His name is Jason, right? I think so, yeah. yeah with she, um, with um, J- Kank, Kank. 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 Yeah, 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 Kank. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're gonna see all that probably most likely in Ahsoka. So yeah, it was just great to see that call back. You know, shout out once again to Favaro and Filoni for you know just <laughs> doing the thing and throwing little Easter eggs in there. So what happens is, uh. Carson is like, yeah, Carson is like, yo, um, we need to contact, you know what I'm saying, the New Republic. And Zeb is like, man, you know they ain't going to listen to you, bro. And he was like, oh, they're going to have to listen if I go in person. So mm-hmm. Carson goes, so Carson goes to straight up um, Coruscant, goes to the headquarters and like, hey, man, and who do we see? <laughs> Take it from here, Rashad. I was just like... Really? We see Space Tim Meadows. Space Tim Meadows. <laughs> Space Ladies Man. <laughs> it was like Tim Meadows. And the funny thing is, like the way he was playing his character, yeah, it, it played a lot like when he was on the show called the um called oh my god, me that stupid show on ABC. Um the shoot. He was a principal, the Goldbergs. Oh, like, yeah. like, like, the, like yeah. the way he, um, like, you know, yeah. he, he played it a lot like the principal on the Goldbergs and man, like, you know, Tim Meadows is just one of those black, um, comedian slash actors that's been this around forever. Yeah. And it's just good to see him pop up on stuff all the time. Yeah. Cur- Colonel Tuttle was his name. And the fact that, and the character that he played was so Tim Meadows. That's Meadows-y. what I'm saying, man. Yeah, he was like, like, hey, man. Just be yourself today. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You ain't got to. No, no, I mean, we know what Star Wars, but we let Bill Burr be Bill Burr, so you can be Tim Meadows. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, Colonel Tuttle's like, you know, so Carson's like, hey, man, this is what's going on in Varbro. And Tuttle's like, man, you know how backed up we are, bro. Like, this is that. <laughs> like, and, and what makes this place so, and he was like, hey, man, this, you know, say they're a thriving community. You know, say they're out there, like, kind of by themselves, you know, 
You, we can't just leave them to hurt. Then who do we see walks in? Trash old Alia Kane. Let me tell you something. <laughs> and that's the chick from the episode with Dr. Pershing, who basically is almost like a what a triple agent, double agent, you know, say a double yeah. agent or whatever. Because yeah. you know, she was with the new republic, she was with the Empire, she was with Moff Gideon and them. And she's like, she's basically like a I could say a lap dog, almost like an intern. Hey, I'm going down to the <laughs> I'm going down to the commissary, sir. Do you want anything or anything like that? Like, no. Nah. And then like you see Carson looks and sees the little insignia uniform she has that shows that she's uh-huh. a con- she's a convert, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever for the Empire. And so he's just like going in, like, hey man, we gotta do this, blah, blah. And then hear her trash stuff go. Um, oh, I know about Navarro. Yeah, and then she was there was like, you do? She's like I spent the time there. So, yeah, you were spent there when y'all was trying to dango destroy Bando and all of them at the J. And then she was like, if I'm not, if I'm not, um, you know, mistaken, sir, mistaken <laughs> um, I don't think they're a part of the New Republic, sir. And then he was like, yo, what they got to do with anything? He was like, Dingo Tim, Dingo Tim Metal. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that may be a problem. <laughs> that might be. Ooh, that might be a problem right there. And he's like, man, are you serious? And he was like, you know, I got to go through a lot of paperwork with the new, new Republic. And he's like, and then Carson's like, yo, how am I supposed to trust y'all? This and that, blah, blah, blah. Moff Gideon was at this. He said, and if I'm not mistaken, I think Moff Gideon didn't even make it to his trial. Like, what is going on? And then when he said that, you see a liar kind of look like, Mm-hmm. Maybe he didn't. <laughs> maybe he did. Maybe, maybe he did. And maybe, maybe not. You know, type of thing. And then he's like, "Hey, hey, hey, that's classified stuff." You know, don't don't be going out here spreading rumors. He was like, "Look here, man. Hey, you know, sorry, they're just gonna have to fend for themselves. Maybe we'll send somebody out there." Type, type thing. So Carson's like, "You know what, man? Bet you got it." And what does he do? He turns. <laughs> Apparently, he must have made his way to. Oh, girl, I can't think of her name for nothing right now. I'm trash with her name, the um, junkyard lady on Tatooine, to yeah. find out um, to find out what happened to that, you know what I'm saying, asteroid droid. And, she, and he basically had a home in Beacon and found Bando. was like, yep, there we go, right there. <laughs> he went Pelimoto. to the planet. Pelimoto, that's it, pardon. <laughs> Pelimoto, you know, I love Pelimoto, by the way. And so, basically... The R what the R five R five R five yeah. unit R5, you know yeah and that R five unit you know has a rich history as well in Star Wars you know basically kind of started the whole daggone thing with Luke Skywalker and all from of a, this from a certain point of view from yes. a certain point of view because apparently off tra- topic real quick they say that R two told R five to blow his gasket so he can go to loop like yo i need to go with them so that kind of ties things a little bit more into r5 knowing that luke was a skywalker <laughs> you you know a little bit like that because remember at the end of revenge of the sith r5 didn't really get his memory wiped only c3po so r5 so i wouldn't be surprised if r2d2 is like narrating all this is going on in the galaxy along. Yeah, R two. Yeah, R two D two knows everything. And to right. be honest, cause I don't. Okay, I'm all right. So <laughs> I'm about to go on a tangent about about the Rise Skywalker. I can't do it right now. We got no time. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, so so he really like like real smooth finds out that the R five Joy is with Mando, tracks R five down because he basically. I guess was his droid or whatever. He served mm-hmm. he served as well. You know what I'm saying? With the rebels. He said, he said yeah, somebody served that served in the Republic is amongst you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like oh, it's an R5. Come on, like, man. Yeah, it was me, man. Hey, <laughs> hey, I can't help it. I got a track hey, on it. It was it was me. <laughs> <laughs> so Mano comes out to say, yo, like, like Paz and like Paz, <laughs> Paz was about to shoot that man, yo. He was like <laughs> He said, hey, man, what are we going to do about him? He said, look, we could just let him go. He said, Psh, oh, we can, oh, kill, we can him. kill him. <laughs> let me tell you something. Paz Vizsla is the walking epitome of what Marshawn Lynch said about that action, boss. Because when he first saw him, he came out. He was the first one out. was like, hey, man, you 
you a long way from where you're supposed to be at, bro. What you doing out here? And he was like, hey, yo, I'm just here. You know, I come in peace. <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger, big Don't dog. Don't shoot the <laughs> whatever. You know? Yeah, man. So, you know, he comes out and he basically, and then like, then, then is like, hey, man, what's going on, bro? And he's like, look, man, I thought you just might want to know that your boy Grief is in some deep trouble, bro. And and you know, you know, saying he was just like, you know, you might want to help him out. He was like, Well, why can't you say, hey man, red tape type stuff? I can't, I can't really get involved, but you know, I think you should look at me. I thought y'all was friends and you were like my last hope. So that's all I want to say. And then he was like, Yeah, then he goes back to, you know, you see where our convent, our co- our coven is, man. You know what? We gotta move now because of you. We gotta move now again because of you. And then he was like, well, we can right. That's what Paz is like. Oh, we can kill him. You know, we could kill him dead. He was like, he's like, hey, 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 man. That he he looked out for me a couple yeah. of while back, y'all. Like, I'm yeah. I gotta return a favor, y'all. Right. And and to be honest, I think the funny thing is that simple, like almost like um, you wash your back, like I wash your back, you wash my back type transaction uh-huh. has been like the kind of the theme of the entire season. It's like if you look out for me, I have I'm to look out for nothing. you. And that's really exactly. all is all has been going on because it's been favors on favors on favors being had mm-hmm. to kind of propel the um the plot forward. That's the that's the only reason that that people was getting looked out for because Amanda Lauren was like, "Yo, you help me, I'm gonna help you out," which leads us to our next conversation because um because Mama Bo steps up and said, "Hey, you know you gonna need some help, right?" So so they had to so now we have like the, the Mandalorian town hall. And everybody's sitting down, yeah, and, and they're trying to plead their case. And man, I said, "Hey, man, my people back on Navarro, like they, 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 they going through it right now, fam. I know, yeah. like, look, 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 look. I know I messed up the first time. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know y'all saving and, me, <laughs> and, and and I know y'all was actually fighting this man. You know what I'm saying for this man, but yo, like." Come on, bro. Like, like he good, he good people. Y'all saw how Navarro was, you know what I'm saying? Like I told yeah. you, like I, I like I could I got I got land there. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, I got we can live there. I got 40 acres of the mule, bro. You know what I'm saying? We good, yo. You know, that's how he was. <laughs> we can go back and set up shop. Stop playing, yeah. Huh? Get out of these uh-huh. daggone caves. Like I hate being in the caves, yeah. Huh? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Underground, literally. So so Pass steps up and he's talking. And, I was and like, he oh. and he I was like, yo. He about to be a hater for real. <laughs> but um, but he wasn't. He was like, look, yeah. y'all, like I understand we on fall. We don't a lot of us died. However, he saved my son. Yeah. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. We, we're, we're gonna help, we're gonna help Mando. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're gonna help Den regardless. I want I want a future for all our kids, you know what I'm saying? To be in the sunshine. We ain't gotta be in high and this stuff no more. So yeah, you know, you know what was funny? What's he that? was like, "Yeah, we basically fought and died to save him and that thing right like, there." Right? Grumman yeah, was they, like, <laughs> Grumman was like, "What the hell I do? What I ain't do nothing do with me." <laughs> yeah, yo, because that finger point he did at Grogu was was highly aggressive too. You know what I'm saying? Grogu was like, "Man, Damn, right?" Like, like, He'll pull his shirt and say, hey, man, I'm at the yeah, hey. too. <laughs> mud, mud horn, baby. You know what I'm saying? What's up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, you know, they, they, they agree. This is the way. This is the way. And uh-huh. your girl, Mama Bo, just steps right in. It's like, look, yo, I know it ain't a lot of us. It's more of them. She laid an entire plan. Mm-hmm. This is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. This is how we're going to do it. Y'all are going to work as a small military unit. Mm-hmm. And it, it was real like it was real good seeing that because even past and the armor was just like, oh, shoot, this girl know what she's doing for real. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they just they, they everybody just fell in line and they went on the journey. Also, have we ever seen two two um two two vehicles in hyperspace at the same time no i was like yo no. how did jump into hyperspace just like back to back like that like i yeah. i don't recall ever seeing that no because what we always saw was <laughs> like that when they went to hyperspace and even in um was it last jedi 
when the Empire had the tracking device, you know, so they tracked them after, you know, where they was at, and then came up on them, like, what, two, three minutes later. So, yeah, man, I mean, they was in hyper hyperspace together, communicating on top of that, and, you know what I'm saying, like, what the plan was, and how, you know, it was going to be, what, she said, what, two drop teams, it was like, then, yo, you, you know what I'm saying, basically, because he has the the actual starfighter, you know what I'm saying? The quicker, like, yo, you're going to encounter the Corsair, draw their little small ships out, and, you know what I'm saying, we're going to drop, and then I'm going to come in and drop in the infantry, and, you know what I'm saying, then we're going to we gonna make it is what it is. Let's talk about how these pirates are trash, though, for real. <laughs> Let's talk about this, man. Look, yo, these pirates, like, straight up bombard this city. The city looks like trash. And oh, by the way, the people in Navarro that did get away, they're like a couple of miles out in like little cave area. And grief is trying to be a leader for them. Like, hey, yo, don't worry. Help is going to come. Some, not- I've sent out <laughs> message yeah. and somebody's on the way. They're like, man, right. where they coming? Yo? Where, where they coming? <laughs> where they at? No. <laughs> I don't see nobody out here. <laughs> man, shut those stupid ass up, man. <laughs> 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 yo, they was not believing him. Yo, he was yeah. putting on a brave face for you know for for his town, but like yo, he was just winging in a prayer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was hoping somebody came. And so the next thing, you know, like so the pirates are like they bombard the city. They ain't even trying like to fix nothing up. You know, they just in there just getting drunk. The little bit of people that's still there. They're terrorizing. My man, my man tried to bring some food out for him. He kicks the dag on a little tray. And like, ah, I feel food. Yo. I, I feel hungry. hungry. <laughs> ah, you know what I'm saying? Bring that more green, that green Star Wars liquor. You know, they sitting there drinking, drinking, having a good time. But then all of a sudden they hear like, like, you know, a ship like it's coming out, not not coming out of hyperspace, but you know, coming in hot. And Grease sees it and was like, I know who that is. Like, thank the Lord. That's my boy right there. And so, you know, Swamp Thing himself, Shard, is like, <laughs> yo, like, hey, man, what's that? It was like, yo, a ship is coming. It's coming in, you know, say real high. And it was like, eh, whatever. It's one ship. That, man, man, then just starts bombarding these mofos. They're just dropping bombs on them and they're flying and they scatter their little ships. And then they start to try to get Jen. Den was murking their pilots. Their pilots are so trash, man. Was just picking them off like it was had them colliding into each other. Everything. Then he led them away. And then that's when Bo came in and said, All right, Den, thanks. Mm-hmm. Drop team one coming out three, two, one. You saw a drop jetpacks come in, they land. And just started, you know, wrecking shop with these these pirates, man. These, these pirates are so uncoordinated, man. Yeah, it's almost like, and even when um Team Two came in, excuse me, it, it almost was like they they kind of got them in like the plaza area, almost uh-huh. by like, almost like by happenstance. Yeah, because um because like they was pretty like Manlo's was on their own, and then they. Had her from like the top of where Grief's little, you know, his 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 um his quarters are, and then uh-huh. from the other side, so they had him boxing in, in that area. Mm-hmm. And um, I like I just want to say, man, like um, your boy Paz with that heavy gun, my man, my man. Let me tell you something. He was giving me straight up Jesse Ventura from the Predator vibes when he came through with that heavy gun. And Paz came and was just like. <laughs> I got this. I was like, "Yo!" You felt like your boy from um, your boy from Aliens mm-hmm. with the heavy gun too. You know yeah, what I'm man. saying? Like, yeah, like it was like that was like okay, finally some 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 cool past visual scenes, not just him being a hater all the time. Right. So very happy about that. So so while that's happening, um, Bo like so Bo like you said was they're all in the air right, and the way that Bo could tan is just outmaneuvering them mm-hmm. in, in, in her ship and then actually hitting the, the Corsair mm-hmm. as well was like, it was perfect. Then Mando came back and they essentially just blew your boy up. You know what I'm saying? Like he was just being stupid. And all the funny, the um 
the um the Nick to, you know what I'm saying? That, that yeah, was, was like, he was like, All right, man, it's been great serving you, Captain. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's been great serving you, Captain. I holler at you. He was like, You coward. My man, if they go haul tail up out of there, man. And I mean, they were so precise in how they attacked the coast there. They took out one engine. They took out it was three engines apparently. They took out all three engines and they crashed. But let's let's let's. Oh also yeah, see. one more quick. Like you know, what was like you know what I liked about the ship. Uh huh. It looked like a real ship. The how yes. he had like a whole like like big uh-huh. yeah whatever yeah. you call a big steering wheel. You know what I'm saying yeah. like they had yeah they had it was like a real legit ship. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was, that it was something. definitely given straight up like um nautical you know said nautical maritime vibes with the ship and how it was set up inside. But let's also talk about the other MVP of this. You know the so back on the ground level, the um you know some of the pirates they have their little you know say so they they have them pent down there because they got like a machine gun at the top and they kind of pent down. Next thing you know, you just hear the music play and you see some hammer and the little clamps. I said, here comes the armorer. Because people forget yo. The armor about that action, she was like, I don't need no guns. I got my hammer and I got my clamps here. Cause she took them out in the um what the first the first season when she took them out when they um when they tried to get her in the um a little underground um convent they had. She straight up wreck shop, took out like eight dudes and was like, Yeah, we clear up here. <laughs> we the town is now, you know what I'm saying? The city is now ours type thing. So yeah, man, I mean it was just a... That that part was just just really really good, a really good episode. You know to show that. Then you got grief, like hey, yo, I want to thank you. You know what I'm saying our Mandalorian friends and thank you so much. And he was like, yo, we we thank you. You know, saying you guys are from here. You know, we're from here. And look, y'all don't have to go into hide. And he was like, everything from the west of this to that. Be my guest. It's yours for you and all your people. And the Mandalorians is like bad, yeah. Yo, your man said you may not have a home planet, but you do ha- now have a home. I was like, yeah. oh, so touching. Yeah. That was, was from the little, heart. That was from the heart, right there. Because in my mind, I was like, I really feel like they're gonna go back to Mandalore. So they got like yeah. a, like this right. is like Mandalore West. You know what I'm saying? Like so, right. So yeah, and and as all this you know cheering is going on, they're like you know rounding up the last few prisoners. Uh-huh. Um, you but past says the bus said, "Hey, the armor wants to see you. The armor wants to see you." Right. So they they walk back to the old um the old area where they used to be, and um and she starts to wax starts to wax you know just just wax poetic about um you know we used to be here. This is the cauldron. Mm-hmm. I remember the, the great cauldron, cauldron. The great cauldron. You know what I'm saying on Mandalore, but they both serve the same purpose. Yada yada yada. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then she's like, look, take your helmet off. And Bo was like, but she was like, right. do, you, do you trust my station? Yeah, like, right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a heck of a statement to make. Yeah, and she dude. was like, okay, take the helmet off. She said, look, yo, essentially, you've walked both paths. You walked both paths. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You can unite the people. And this is what you're going to do, basically. Uh-huh. You saw that you like, of course, these I was taught that the Mivasaur was just a legend, uh-huh. but you actually saw it. Yeah. This is a sign of the new age. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, what's the new age? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so she, they, they both walk out to where the rest of man loins are. Did you see how they were looking? They were oh, yeah, all oh, like, yeah, yeah. they had that look like, oh, no, the hell she. Like this, look at this, Frank. Like, I thought you was down with us, baby girl. And Paz was the first one. Hey, yo, like, what, what, what's up here? Did that's what the armor basically let him know. Like, hey, man, she's walked both paths. She has the right to take her helmet off. You know what I'm saying? She's walked the path of the way, and she's walked the path of the others. And she, you know, saying, and we need to stop this division crap amongst our people. And you, she's going to go. And her thing is she's going to unite us as one man, you know what I'm saying, one Mandalore as we go back to our planet eventually. And Which then was, was just leads to so many more questions. And, and before we get to the questions, got to wrap it up because uh-huh. your boy Carson Tiva is heading back home. And he <laughs> says, look, yo, what the heck is this? I see a Lambda class shuttle. 
Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? He sends the um the droid to go, you know, scout and look at it. Uh-huh. And he said, no, everybody's up here is dead. He said, look, yo, who, who, who's supposed to be up this joint? And he so was question, like, was that was that the droid talking to him or was that nah, like somebody- that was it's my back on, on yeah. comms. OK, yeah. Yeah. So he was talking to, you know, he called basically called, called a base and was like, yo, like, who shuttle is this? And it was like, well, that's classified. You know what I'm saying? And then they uh-huh. figured out, like, yo, this was that's Moff a- getting his transport. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, yo, this wasn't an attack. This was an extraction. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, on the side, you see like um, remnants of um, Beskar alloy. Uh-huh. So your boy was like, do you mean that the Moff Gideon got, uh, you know what I'm saying, got, you know, um, extracted by the Mandalorians? Yeah, he was like, I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah. It's an in- interesting ending, which I feel is like just a huge misdirects. Yeah, because I mean, at the at that point, we already know like the empire was mining and taking everybody's best car anyway. Yeah. So, and remember too, in um, I'm thinking yeah, it was season two of the Mandalorian. Season two of the Mandalorian, when Ahsoka and them fought the acolyte of Thrawn. You know, she had like a best scar, like. Spear, spear yeah or something like something like that and we never saw what happened you know so because she, she didn't die or anything oh sh- tony so not even that but best car spear right mm-hmm. why was um ahsoka there ahsoka was there looking for who for thrawn, thrawn. Mm-hmm. so my thing is thrawn got moff getting it out and mm-hmm. Moff getting is working with Thrawn because Thrawn mm-hmm. has all this information about mm-hmm. everything that's going on. And yeah. that's how to me, that's I mean, this is the logical path for, mm-hmm. for all these paths to actually meet and, and, and converge. Yeah. So and and just think, man, this has just been the first half of this season, all this stuff that's happened. Mm-hmm. First half. So ain't no telling what's about to pop off the next five episodes, you know what I'm saying, of this show. Because, I mean, we still got questions of, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, with the mythosaur. We got questions of what is Elia Kane up to, you know what I'm saying, where's Moth Gideon, you know what I'm saying, it's looking to where did those, um, um, you know what I'm saying, and the tie interceptors come from that was in the first, you know, season. We, we pretty much think we know where they came from, and then you're going to look into Ahsoka's probably going to pop up if Thrawn pops up. Is Luke going to come back type, you know what I'm saying? Luke going to come back type thing. Are we going to see Thrawn maybe chilling out on Exegol? <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying? Like that, you, you, you know? So it's- Yo, um, I mean, and, and on the real, if you listen this far, definitely come back tomorrow because yeah. we're going to go over Bad Batch. And like, Ooh. there's a lot of questions that interlap, that interlap, that that inner, the inner weave, you know what I'm yeah. saying, and overlap. There we go. The overlap with, mm-hmm. with Bad Batch and and this, yeah. the in the end of this episode as well. So I mean, I, I can't, I, I can't lie, man. Star Wars was on fire today, y'all. Yeah, and it, it was. On, I was. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it, was it was. It was a good day to be a fan today. You know what I'm yes. saying? Good day. Yes. Awesome episode. Um, also, we saw B wings at the beginning of episode two. You know what I'm saying? Um, on when they went on that little, like you know, little mm-hmm. planet when yeah. they went to the bar or whatever. So a couple of B wings. Uh-huh. What else I see? Um, we saw talked about Zeb. Um, yeah, that's really it, man. Like it was, yeah. it was a great episode. Great episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm wondering, are we ever going to I understand? They might cover it in the Ahsoka show or whatever. Are we ever going to get a Thrawn, a show on Thrawn like? Where he come? Because because I don't know if they're going to go by how in the books basically how Thrawn came because his people are called the Chiss Chiss Ascendancy the Chiss <laughs> Ascendancy and they are like in straight up unknown space like they're not even they know about the Republic and all that stuff the Empire they knew about that before they became the Empire but they were like their own little thing and there's like a book with Thrawn where um. He actually meets Anakin. Like they have like a standoff in space with the spaceship. And he kind of knows who Anakin Skywalker is, but not, you know what I'm saying? Not really. So I would just love to see something live action that's going to be canon of the ascension of Thrawn. Because you got to understand, Thrawn was the Grand Admiral 
of the Empire. He was in charge. Basically, it was like Palpatine, Vader, Thrawn, as far as, you know, how it went with, you know what I'm saying, that military and everything with the Empire. And Palpatine, for all intents and purposes, was racist towards alien ra- to towards alien races, man. Mm-hmm. Like you notice in the Empire, they were they're, they're all humanoid. You know, they're all humans for the most part. But he was so impressed with Thrawn that he Thrawn rose through, rose through the ranks to become Grand freaking Admiral of the um the Empire, man. So I would love to see something like I would love to see interaction between Thrawn and um and and Tarkin. You know, what I'm saying two just cunning. You know what I'm saying? Guys like that, man. So, yeah, I, I really can't wait till Thrawn gets in. And for people who aren't really familiar with Thrawn, you know who he is through, you know, expanded universe. But when Rebels brought him in, that became actual canon. So, yeah, you, you, they, you yeah, yeah, you gotta go. You gotta, you gotta watch Rebels. If you read um, Timothy Zahn, like, wrote, like, a like a newer book, like, 2018 or so. I think it's, like, two, two Thrawn novels out. Yeah. So, definitely, um, yeah, yeah, I gotta yo. I'm telling you, you watching any of this right now, you have yeah. you have to go back and watch Rebels, Rebels and watch Clone yeah. Wars. Like, cause it'll just make so much more, it makes so much more sense. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Definitely right. so. Cool. That being said, um, that's it, man. Like I said earlier, we we will be back tomorrow mm-hmm. with um with the Bad Batch season finale that it showed the penultimate and the finale today. <sighs> yes. And I yeah. low key like Bad Batch was better than Mandalorian, yo. Like, and I- <laughs> yeah, and that's you know, what I'm saying some people might be like, "Well, that's a bold statement." No, man, it I is, mean, it, yo. Yeah, it was. So. It was so good, man. But yeah, we'll see y'all tomorrow, man. All right, y'all. Peace.